The A phase in the DMAIC methodology stands for analyze. Put simply, the main goal of the analyze phase is to identify and verify the root cause or causes of a problem in a process. Now, this phase can also be used to identify smaller issues that could be improved. We'll tell you what it's all about in this video, and this time, we have some help to explain it. So let's get started. In the last DMAIC video, on the measure phase, we talked about how you walk a process to measure its effectiveness. We looked at the prep, cooking, and delivery process steps for a BLT sandwich. This phase is where you analyze the metrics you collected. What does the data tell you about the process? Are there measurements that indicate things you can improve? In our BLT example from the measure video, we had a five-day inventory for raw ingredients with two hours of prep time and 15 minutes of rework on the order. Also, 25% of all orders were being returned by the customer. Clearly, this process would be much better if there was a lower level of inventory to prevent spoilage and if fewer orders were being returned by customers. One of the key tools used in the analyze phase is an FMEA, which is an acronym for Failure, Modes, and Effects Analysis. Let's look at this tool in a bit more detail. The purpose of an FMEA is to identify potential ways that a process can fail and the risk that each kind of failure might have. Also to prioritize actions to reduce the chance of failure and to help focus on prevention. You can complete an FMEA in eight steps. The first step is to transfer all of the critical and controllable inputs from your process map into the first column of the FMEA form. You enter one process step and input for each row. Then, starting with the first row, you move across each of the columns until you reach the Actions Recommended column. Using our BLT Lunch Order to Delivery process map, the first process step is to prepare the raw ingredients. And the input is customer order. The second step in an FMEA form is to fill in the potential failure mode column for the associated process step and input listed. Failure modes are the way in which the listed input might fail. Failures can be any errors or defects, especially ones that affect the customer. These failures can be potential or actual. For our example, a potential failure mode for the first process input of customer order is, order is written incorrectly. The question we would ask here is, what can go wrong at this step? For the third step, you move to the next column of potential failure effects. Here, you'll document the effect that a particular failure mode can have on the process, especially as perceived by the customer or user. For our example, a potential failure effect for the first process step and input is customer receives the wrong meal. So here it's helpful to ask, what is the impact on the customer? In the fourth step of completing the FMEA, you skip the next column with the heading SEV, we'll come back to that, and complete the potential causes column. In this box, you document why the process step and input has the specific failure mode you have listed. There may be several causes that produce your listed failure, so try to choose the single most prevalent or common cause. For the order written incorrectly failure mode, our example lists order form is a blank piece of paper as the potential cause for the failure. A good question to ask for this section is, what are the reasons for the process step to go wrong? We call this approach the five whys. Think about it as being a child again. When you used to annoy your parents by asking a question, they give you an answer and then you proceed to repeatedly ask why to every consecutive answer. That's the five whys problem analysis tool. The five whys start with a problem statement. Here's one for example. Bi-weekly washing of a well-known memorial was causing accelerated deterioration of the stone. Well, why must we wash it so often? This is the only monument that requires such frequent washing. The bird's droppings must be removed. Well, why are there so many birds? The birds are feeding on the spiders in the memorial. Well, why does this monument have so many spiders? 
The spiders are feeding on the mites in the memorial. Then why does this monument have so many mites? The mites are drawn to the lights turned on at night. Well, why does it have more mites compared to the other memorials that have lights? You see, the lights at this memorial are turned on two hours before sunset and turned off two hours after sunrise. The lights at the other memorials are turned on at sunset and off at sunrise. As you can see, the five whys exercise is about drilling down to get to the root cause of a problem versus solving the symptom. Sometimes, of course, there may be more than one reason, and in that case, it's important to go down both paths, asking why. For the fifth step of an FMEA, you complete the current controls column. A control is a mechanism that prevents the potential cause of the failure mode from occurring. In our example, there are no current controls for preventing an order from being written incorrectly. A typical question you might ask here is, what are the existing controls that prevent or detect the failure mode prior to leaving the process step? At this point, you'll repeat steps one through five for every critical and controllable process input. The sixth step actually involves completing several columns. You assign ratings in three columns to calculate a risk priority number, or RPN, for a specific process step and input. Those columns are severity, which we mentioned earlier is SEV, as well as occurrence and detectability. Your team will agree on assigning values for each of these factors using a scale of 1 to 10, where only the values of 1, 5, and 10 are used on the form. Now, everyone must agree on the interpretation of the rating scale. This ensures that all the factors are assessed using the same measuring stick. When rating severity, ask the question, what is the importance or impact on the customer requirements? For example, a 10 on the severity factor represents the most impactful end of the scale, and 1 is the least impactful. With occurrence, ask, how often does this happen? With detection, you should ask, how likely am I to detect the failure? So back to our food delivery example, the RPN number for preparing the raw food customer order is a 500. We got this number by multiplying the SEV rating of 10 with the occurrence, or OCC rating of 5, and a detection, or DET rating of 10. Complete these ratings for every process step and input on the FMEA. The seventh step is to determine recommended actions for the process steps with the highest RPNs. A high RPN means this is the first item that should have actions developed. These actions should provide the most effective improvement for the process. In this example, the prepare raw ingredients process step and customer order input has the highest RPN rating. A possible recommended action or improvement for this process step and input might be to create a standard order form. The eighth and final step is to develop a plan for when and who will be responsible for completing the recommended actions. For our example, the owner will be responsible for creating a standard order form within the next month. The list of recommended actions Plans and responsibilities are the basis from which you will develop an implementation plan. This then brings us to the next DMAIC phase, improve, which we'll learn about in the next video. Let's get ready to make some improvements.